Mark chapter number 6. Look at verse 5. I'm going to lift it from, from the New International Version, if you will. Uh, allow me to do so. Here's what the Word of the Lord says. Uh, it says, Mark 6 and 5. He could not do any miracles there except lay his hands on a few sick people and heal them. Here's verse 6. Hear this. He was amazed at their lack of faith. Then Jesus went around teaching from village to village. But look at Luke chapter 7 and verse 9. It says, when Jesus heard this, he was, here it is again, amazed at him. And turned to the crowd following him. He said, I tell you, I have not found such great faith even in all of Israel. Father, Savior, Healer, God. One more time. Before we ask you for anything, we tell you thank you for everything. For this day, thank you. For your glory, thank you. And yes, for the fact that last night was not our last night, we make a conscious decision to tell you thank you. We ask that you throw your weight around in the place, heal and save and deliver. Bring high places down and make crooked places straight. Stand up in this place tonight, Lord. And we thank you for it now in Jesus' name. Everybody that loves him, say amen. Amen another time. You may be seated. I would that you would consider for just a few moments. I promise I'm going to uh, do our best to uh, expedite here. Y'all going to pray with me? All right. I'm all right. I'm going to see you in a minute. I'm going to tell. Uh, look at someone and help me get my thought out. Tell them, and this is a prophetic declaration. You got to say it right. Just tell them, say, neighbor, God has more. Yeah. I want you to say it this time in light of your vision, your future, your purpose, your plan. Tell another neighbor one more time. God has more. But brothers and sisters, saints and friends, I'll... Begin uh, by removing the mystery, removing uh, any uncertainty or the need for you to try to figure it out by telling you at the onset of our ministry or of our ministry moment here rather, that this message is really built around the concept of vision. This ministry or this message rather is built around the idea of vision. We know from a cursory glance at our Bibles that the Bible instructs us that where there is no vision, the people what? Perish. One translation takes that and explains it along this wise, where there is no vision, the people cast off all restraint. In other words, where there is a lack of vision, there is a lack of structure, there is a lack of direction, there is a lack of, 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 of future focus. And as a result of that, the perish that it means in the original text really means not so much the death of a physical mortal body, but the death of an idea, the death of potential. And some of you, I must tell you at the onset, don't get mad at me, but I need you to understand that some of us are dealing with a, a potential that is on life support right now. Some of you, you have a business that you have not released, you have not started. There is an idea in you there's something that some of you are carrying that you have not released you have set on you have you have held it back hostage if you will and the problem or the problem that you're not aware of until this moment is that if you do not move your vision is going to die your idea is going to become extinct and it's this concept of vision that the Lord has really been stuck in or rather sticking in my uh, mind I've not been able to shake it. We have, of course, a vision night coming up on Tuesday where we're outlining the plan for our church, but I've even been impressed, and I must share with you, that I believe 2024 has to be the year that you personally develop and cultivate a vision for your life. Uh-oh, I thought y'all was going to act funny. I'm going to preach on through it, though. Uh, you got quiet because we don't like to think about doing the hard work of putting a vision together. But you need a vision for your life. How much money are you trying to save this year? Not make, save. There's a difference. How, how, much, how much weight are you trying to lose this year? Uh-oh, when you step on that scale and look down, what's the number that you want to see looking back at you? Uh-huh, uh-huh, for your relationship 
relationships, for your children, for your career, all of us need to have a vision. And don't leave it in the natural world, in the spiritual world. You, you ought to have a vision for your prayer life. You ought to have a vision for your anointing. How many people am I going to win to God this year? I have a vision. I've, I've got co-workers that need to be saved. And God's going to give me the strategy to execute it. But I need a vision. And the Lord put it in my spirit to tell our church today very clearly and directly that once you embrace the importance of a vision, you must understand then that your vision will only come to pass, hear me, if you have a level of faith that supports and undergirds the vision you said God gave you. Pastor Mo, what are you trying to say? I'll say it on this wise. You will never see your vision come to pass if you do not elevate your faith to the level that your vision wants to exist on. And it's this idea of elevating faith that arrested my attention as we look here at Mark 6 and Luke chapter number 7 because both Mark 6 and Luke 7, hear me, are both passages about the importance of faith. Are you listening to me? Both Mark 6 and Luke 7 are both both about the importance and the necessity of faith. It's just that they both show it from a different lens. You look here in Mark chapter 6 and you discover a very familiar scene. It is in Mark 6 where the Bible declares that Jesus in the morning of his ministry, early on in his career, if you will, he is ministering at home. He is in his hometown. He's around his people. And it is from this encounter that we get a truth that is both hurtful but necessary where Jesus will ultimately declare to us that a prophet is not without honor save in his own country. In other words, what he says is a prophet or a gift, if you will, can receive honor everywhere but at home. Uh-oh, uh-oh, uh-oh. Can I stay here for just a moment and tell you as a church, it's important that we understand this lesson now that we must learn how to celebrate people in the infancy of their gift. Oh, Lord, help me here. I, I want to I wanna bust that devil down right now that wants to get you in a place where you only celebrate people when you see them on a certain level. I want to, uh-uh, we're going to tear that stronghold down where you only honor people and recognize people and put value on people when you see them as an avenue to platform for you. Uh, no, no, no. You got to learn how to celebrate people where they are before the world sees them. And let me talk while I'm talking. This is why when you come in here, especially at a church like this one where there are so many hidden gifts in the room, you can't afford to be bougie and stank over here. Y'all not going to say nothing to me, but I'm going to say something to you. you. You can't afford to come in here and have your head up in the air because the truth is, and some of y'all ought to shout at me here, you don't know who you sit next to in this church. Come here, not just today, February 2024, but you don't know who that neighbor will be in six months, in eight months, in two years. Y'all not hearing me in here. Some of y'all are sitting in the same room with folk that you're going to watch on TV not long from now. I'm prophesying with my eyes open. Some of you are sitting on the same road with people that they're about to write interviews about in magazines. They're about to do stories about them on a good way for a good reason in the news. And the only issue is you just haven't heard about them yet. But can I tell you and help somebody? While you maybe not have not heard of them, God has. And God has a plan. I hear him saying to tell you, I know the thoughts I think towards you. They are thoughts of good and not of evil come here to bring you to unexpected end. I need about 10 of y'all to tell somebody you can't see it now but God's got big plans for me. Tell them. Yes, God, he's, he's got plans for me. I know I don't come from a rich family, but God got a plan for me. I know I came from the wrong side of the church. I know I made some mistakes, may have dropped the ball, may have messed up, may have made some poor decisions, but God has a plan for me. And guess what? Look at me if you want to, but eyes have not seen it. 
Feel the Holy Ghost pushing something in here. Ears have not heard ah, what God's going to do. And so, let me hurry through here. I got to get you out of here. And so they're looking at, hallelujah, they're looking at Jesus and don't recognize who he is because he's working wonders. He's teaching Mike. He's, he's preaching in the synagogue. And at one point, Elder Matisse, they are amazed at his revelation. They go on to say, where does this man get this insight from? Where did this man get this revelation? And all is well until one messy church member with her little arms folded and her little eyes, little beady eyes squinted. She looks at Jesus and says, hold, hold on, wait a minute, wait a minute, hold on, wait a minute, wait, your, your time now. Isn't that Mary's boy uh, the carpenter? Isn't that, isn't that just little, didn't he, didn't he go to school with your brother and your sister back in? Yeah, yeah, that, that's just Jesus. And they reduced him to a lower level and it is then that the Bible says he could do no mighty works there. There being a place of their unbelief. Nothing was wrong with the physical location. He was doing great works in the same space but when dishonor walked in, the miracles walked out. God help me preach in here. And it is then that the Bible says, hear me, that Jesus was amazed at their lack of faith. Somebody say that word in the atmosphere, amazed. Jesus then in Mark 6 is amazed at the lack of faith on behalf of the people of God but then we juxtapose this to Luke chapter number 7 and we see the same Jesus in a different situation now we could flip this and make this entire conversation about honor but look here closer because the Bible says in Luke 7 that there is a centurion, there is a soldier that approaches Jesus and says I need you to do something because my servant is sick. Now, so many lessons right here. One of which is this. I love the fact that the centurion did not waste a whole lot of time running to any and everybody that did not have the potential to change his situation. I got to pause and tell somebody in here that this cannot be another year that you waste all of this conversation and all this whoop de woo and all of this back and forth and all these sad Instagram lives and all these cryptic Facebook folks trying to get somebody to ask you what's wrong with you. You've gone to Instagram about it. You've gone to TikTok about it. You've gone to Facebook about it, but you ain't saying nothing to God about it. And the problem is he is the only only one that can change your situation. I'm here on an assignment to tell somebody, I love your degree. I love your education. We push education in our church, but you better believe there are some things that will come in your life that cannot be handled with the degree that's on your wall. I, I, I want you to be financially free. God knows I do. I want you to be able to drive the best and wear the best, keep time with the best, live in the best, travel to the best but best believe there are some things that will come up that your bank account your savings your checking your 401k your investments will not be able to handle I, I want you to have connections in high places and, and know people like Elder Wayne does that, that can call and, and make things happen but please understand there are things that will come up that your connection and your portfolio and your Rolodex and your network and your fraternity and your sorority will not be able to handle and I'm preaching to a handful of you I feel you in the spirit that are in this place and you're saying pastor I hear your spirit crying I did not come tonight for a fashion show I did. Who am I talking to? I did not come tonight for a concert. I did not come to make a business connection. I didn't come for a hookup. But I came in here. You can't tell by looking at me. I smiled. I stood. I clapped. But there's some stuff waiting on me outside of this church. That if God don't do it, it won't be done. Tell your neighbor, say, neighbor, this is a God job. Hey, hey, yeah, yeah. I love you. I know you're praying, but this is a this is a God job. In fact, I don't even have the time to explain it to you. I can't tell you wouldn't understand if I tried. Just know I'm standing here in need of a miracle. But can I tell I feel like prophesying to somebody though and telling you that if you came in here with that level of expectation, good news, good news. God says, I'm getting ready to meet you 
you at the level of your expectation. Small expectation, small manifestation. Great expectation, great manifestation. Mm. I've had three people and say he's going to do it for me today uh, no no if you ain't got no fa- oh yes God I'm going to tell him uh, if you didn't feel no faith when you high five take your hand uh, and you get your hand sanitizer early and wipe they down off your hands uh, and high five somebody that look like they got the Holy Ghost uh, and connect with them one can chase a thousand uh, two can put ten thousand to flight uh, tell somebody I believe uh, it's going to happen for you today it's going to happen for your family Family. It's going to happen for your money. It's going to happen in your body. It's going to happen for your job. It's going to happen for you. Somebody shout today, 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 today. Uh, clap your hands and shout today, today. Uh, he says, I got to hurry. He says, uh, he says, uh, he says, uh, I need Jesus uh, to do something about this. Uh, and what I like about it, ooh, Yes, God. What I like about it is uh, he says, uh, I I know that because uh, of who I am, uh, you're not going to go home with me. I I know that because of who I am, uh, you're not going to to really want to deal with me. But what I love about the centurion, I need you to catch this. Uh, I feel like shouting right now. He says, uh, even though you're not going to want to go home with me, Jesus, uh, because of who I am and how I've lived, uh, he says, the truth is, uh, let's see if y'all get it. I don't even need you to go home with me. Uh, God help me in here. He says, all I really need is for you to just send the word. How can I'm trying to I'm trying to talk to somebody in here and tell you that you don't need as much as you think you need. All you really need is for God to release one word about your situation. To tell somebody as a neighbor, I thought I needed more than that. But tell them, no, all you need is a word. I know you've got a bad diagnosis from the doctor, and you thought you needed chemo, and you thought you needed this surgery. And you thought you needed this transplant. But what if I told you, you don't need a transplant, you need a word. What word do you need? And he was wounded for my transgressions, bruised for my iniquities. The chastisement of peace was upon him. But with his stripes, I'm healed. Send the word, send the word, send the word. Some of you have some unsaved family members that you've got on the altar. And you thought you needed a judge to drop charges. Can I tell you what you really need is a word. What's that word? Train up a child in the way he should go. And when he's old, baby boy ain't got no chance but to come back because I can't depart. Tell your neighbor, you just need a word. What word do you need? Come on. I need a word because I've got some warfare at home. And I need a word that will tell me that no weapon formed against me is going to be able to prosper. I'm going to do something different here today. I'm preaching, but I need you to prophesy. Would you take about mountain? seconds and just open up your mouth and give God an opportunity to claim your word by sending it to your house right now to open your mouth you spoke in death you spoke in doubt you spoke in lack but I want you to send the word right now that says many are the afflictions of the righteous but the Lord will deliver Y'all ain't saying nothing. Come on, send the word. Aren't you tired of crying at night? Aren't you tired of anxiety having you in a headlock? Send the word to your house and say, Weeping has endured for a night. But joy, 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 joy. I said, Joy is coming in the morning. And so then, brothers and sisters, the Bible, the Bible, the Bible says that he sends the word and he's healed. But what I like about Jesus is that the same 
the same Jesus in Mark chapter 6 that was amazed at small faith is the same Jesus in Luke chapter 7 that says I'm also amazed at how great this faith is can I get a witness in here look at your neighbor and say neighbor whether your faith is small or whether your faith is great say either way it's amazing but say you have got to decide today if you want to amaze God with great faith or amaze him with small faith have I got a witness in him because you got to know today that if you're going to amaze God with great faith you got to understand that you can't play it safe and also please God because the Bible declares in Hebrews 11 and 6 it says without faith it is impossible to please God which means that you're going to need faith if you're really going to please God because God is not pleased if you don't give him room to step in and do something I want to preach to somebody that might be scared a little bit I want to preach to somebody that might be nervous about your assignments because it scares you when you think about it but I want you to hear me clearly in the spirit if you're not scared then it's not big enough because anything that's worth dreaming for and anything that's worth believing for it ought to scare you a little bit and the area in between your faith and the place of your fear is where God steps in y'all ain't come to have no church y'all ain't come to have no church y'all ain't come to have no church but is there anybody that'll get some sanitizing and rub it in real good and why don't you just lean over and grab your neighbor by the hand and say now even if you're scared because that's where God gets glory but I also got to tell him that as long as you have a backup plan you ain't really using your faith because faith is the substance of things that are hoped for and the evidence of things not seen which means if you can see it you're not using your faith if you see the way out you're not using your faith if you see the door open you're not using your faith and you can either have control or you can have faith but you can't have both but is there anybody that'll just look at your neighbor and say neighbor 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 i'm taking my hands off of the situation and saying, Jesus, you can take the wheel. Ain't God all right? Ain't God all right? I wish I could preach today and tell you that it's also important that if you're going to have faith, you got to leave your comfort zone. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor. Leave your comfort zone. Y'all ain't talking. I said, leave your comfort zone. Because the Bible says about Abraham, the father of faith. Have I got a witness in here? It says, by faith, Abraham left his home to go out to the promise that would be revealed. Y'all miss when I said, let me rewind one time. Ooh, nah, nah, nah. It says, by faith, Abraham left his home and went to the promise that 
shall be revealed. He didn't know where. He didn't know how. He didn't know when. But he knew God had given him a word. And he left what he knew and stepped out. How did he do it, Lori? He did it by faith. Why don't you look at somebody and say, neighbor, I got a true word. Explanation for what God's gonna do. I got a true word description for how God's gonna move. Say, if you wanna know how I'm gonna get it done, say, I'll tell you by faith. Y'all ain't saying nothing. If you wanna know how I'm coming out of this. It's by faith. You gon' start a business and you didn't go to school. How you gon' do it? By faith. You gon' be a millionaire. How you gon' get your idea out? Who's gon' publish your book? Who's gon' sign you to a deal? I don't know the who, but I know the how. It's by faith. Y'all ain't saying nothing. But I need somebody that can just lift your voice and say, This is the end that I move by faith. This is the end I operate by faith. This is the year I make decisions using my faith. Because I want to pray somebody. I want to tell somebody that the Holy Ghost said, I'm getting ready to reward you for your faith. I'm getting ready to show you that you wasn't crazy when you stepped out your boat. I'm getting ready to show you you didn't miss God when you stepped out that comfort zone. Ain't God all right? Ain't God all right? Ain't God all right? One more neighbor, my faith is going to another level. My faith is opening doors. My faith is turning it around. My faith is getting the bill paid. Let's go higher. My, my faith is turning it in my favor. My faith. It's gonna get my healing. My faith is gonna get me out of this. I'm believing that I'm gonna receive what God has because God's got more. I said, God's got more. I said, God's got more. I said, God's got more. What does it have, Pastor? He has exceedingly abundantly above all. Can I ask or think? Did y'all hear what I said? He's got more eyes have not seen and ears have not heard. God's got more. God's got more. He's got so much that it's gonna press down, shake together, and run over. He's got so much more to tell the whole world it was nobody but God and is there anybody that can give him real glory I feel the Holy Ghost here because you know there's more how do you know because I'm only alive I'm only still here because God must have more for me to do if you believe it tonight lift your voice Open your mouth and shout, shout right now. I said, shout tonight. I said, 
said shout tonight I said shout tonight you're still looking at me but I speak over you in the name of the Lord Jesus that it's your season to go to another level another level of faith you've been low for too long go to another level another level of faith you've been down for too long go to another level level of your faith why not praise him why not lift him why not celebrate why not give him glory why not shout for joy lift up your voice and shout Without the music, let me hear you praise him on the level of your faith. Go, 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 go. Little faith, little praise, little manifestation. Where, where, where's the great faith? Where's the great faith? Where's the great faith? I said, where's the great faith? I said, where's the great faith? I said, where's the great faith? Is it anybody here? Is it anybody here? Is it anybody here that can tell one more neighbor? I got so much faith that I can praise him for me and praise him for you. Tell him you're coming out. You're crossing over. You're going to get through. You're going to make it. You're going to make it. You're going to make it. Yeah. 